If you're buying a car with a dual-clutch transmission, here's everything I learned after driving more than 10,000 kilometres in one. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. This is the first in a three-part series about dual-clutch transmissions and whether or not you should buy one. Links to parts two and three are going to be located at the end of this video once all three parts are live. In this series, everything I learned about dual-clutch transmissions from driving more than 10,000 Ks in one, what they are, how they work, three key positives, three key negatives, and four critical conclusions which you need to know if you want to buy the right new car. This video covers DCT basics, what they are, and the long-term test I performed. If you want to know how they work, here's a link somewhere up there if you're watching this on a desktop computer at least. Let us do this. Dual clutch transmissions look just like automatics, at least from the cockpit. There's the same kind of shift lever and maybe, but not always, some shifting paddles behind the steering wheel. But down there, it's all very different to a conventional auto. There's essentially a manual gearbox doing the work with two different parallel gear trains and two different clutches. The clutches are concentric, so they look kind of like one clutch from without, but trust me on this, there are two. One clutch engages one gear train and the other clutch engages the other, hence the name. All the clutch operation and the gear shifting is automated. There's a computer making the decisions and high speed servo motors moving the bits and pieces. Engaging the clutches and shifting the gears. It's all done for you. And the control of these functions is very precise. The i30 uses a dry clutch setup. The alternative is the so-called wet clutch, an engineering euphemism for a clutch sitting in an oil bath. Over the years, I've driven dozens of cars with dual clutch transmissions, but I've never actually lived with one. So I approached Hyundai about that and they got on board with the project. But just to be clear on this, Hyundai supplied the 1.6 turbo petrol i30 SR Premium for evaluation, but they have no say whatsoever in what I report here and no money changed hands. Hyundai might not like some of the things I say about this, and this is, of course, their prerogative. That's the dice they roll when they supply any vehicle for evaluation, I'd suggest. And to all of you conspiracy theorists who think I'm on the take on this, I'd say if I was paid for this review, those three criticisms coming up in part two, they probably would not be there. But let's not let logic get in the way of those inevitable brain-dead accusations. <laughs> Just a note on the way I drove the car. I am not and habitual abuser of vehicles. I've been driving media evaluation vehicles for two decades or something, and it's hardly a novelty, at least not anymore. But I hate abusing vehicles. I guess what you need to know here is that these kinds of evaluation vehicles generally live much harder lives than vehicles driven by actual owners. Very few people buy a brand new car and drive it like a journalist. This hard, this often. No point wrapping the car in cotton wool to evaluate it though, right? I used this vehicle for my Pro Tip Advanced Driving Series a few months ago, and it got driven pretty hard for most of that. Lots of hard cornering, significant brake inputs, lots of wide open throttle from peak torque and peak power, plus lots of aggressive manual downshifts on the paddles. It's just part of the deal to get the footage. I guess what you need to know is it's fair to say that my 10,000 kilometres in this car would be harder than most owners 20 or 30,000 k's. Plus, I drove a lot in Sydney traffic, which is hell on earth for engine oil and very hard on clutches in particular. This car has been to boot camp on Paris Island for 10,000 k's. 
after all that. I can't feel any obvious signs of wear and tear. No rattles, no squeaks, no shudder on clutch engagement, stuff like that. I had it up on the hoist the other day while it was being serviced and even the brakes showed minimal wear. So it seems like a pretty durable package to me. The i30SR uses a seven-speed transmission with the tongue-twisting name D7UF1, manufactured in-house by Hyundai Daimos. It's rated to 340 newton meters. It's the big brother of the other seven-speeder, which is limited to 220. They're both kind of modular. You get the same basic design, but beefier clutches and gear train on the high-rated one. But the same control architecture is used on both. It's only seven kilos heavier for the beefier torque capacity. And this is actually the second generation of Hyundai dual clutch transmission. The first was a six speed DCT in the Velosta, which debuted in 2011. These seven speeders rolled out on the Sonata and the Velosta Turbo in 2015, and they made their way into the i30 and the Tucson in 2016. They're compact and they're reasonably light. You get seven forward gears plus reverse in a package that's 385 millimetres long and it tips the scales just under 80 kilos. I hope that helps as a primer. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching. The links for parts two and three will be up next in due course over the next couple of days. Check out part two for the critical positives and the negatives to see whether a dual clutch transmission is right for you.